them the fences a little bit. Yeah. I sent them a card, and them a card in the mail. A very friendly card, very nice card. I had my wife proofread it and everything. And guess, and, and you would not believe what he did. He sent that card right back. And he did not open it at all. Well, 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 why did you do that, Brother Calk? You were not in the wrong. No, I wasn't in the wrong, but I was trying to make yes. peace. Right, right. Trying to make peace. Yes, sir. You could be totally in the wrong and the right and have the wrong spirit yeah. and have the wrong attitude. Hey, I'm a kushin, I'm a baby, I'm a kushin, I'm a honey. The Holy Ghost is saying tonight, it's not an issue of how right you are. It's an issue of what are you doing about the situation? What are you doing about the problem? What are you doing without, but about the issue? Are you making war or are you making peace? Are you, are you trying to cause a fight? Are you trying to cause a disruption? Are you trying to cause an uproar? Are you trying to cause drama or are you trying to make peace? Are you trying to make an amends? Are you trying to move toward this thing called unity between your brother and right. between your All sister? Right. It is important. Yeah. It is essential. Yeah. It is something yeah. that we cannot trap in the name of holiness. Come on, that's good. That's good. Follow peace with all men. Amen. Yes, sir. Case in point, if I'm at a big conference, there's 4,000 plus preachers and people there, and there's one, to my knowledge, that I know that's there, that I feel a little bit of pressure, that I'm not living in peace. Right, right, right. You're not living in peace. Right, I have to do something to remedy that situation. Yeah. If we have habits of walking by people without speaking, All right. we're not in, at, at peace. Amen. Wow. If we're not man or woman enough to look people in the eye and shake their hand or hug their neck if it's appropriate, we're not in peace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If we, have an, uh, uh, if we have a habit of trying to isolate people yeah. or push people away, not include people, then we're not living in peace. Right. We're not living in peace with ourselves. We're not living in peace with God. Amen. And we're not living in peace with them. Amen. Come on. We have to follow peace yes, sir. with all men. All men. All men. Amen. That that includes doctrinally too. Yeah, come on. And I'm going to tell you something. There's liberals and there's conservatives All in right. every movement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But if I have an attitude of disfellowshipping someone right. because they're more liberal than I am, All right. come on. then I'm not living in peace. All right. no, sir. If I have an attitude of disfellowshipping a brother. Because he believes it's stronger than I do. Right. Or he has convi he has more convictions than I have. Yeah. The truth of the matter is I'm not living in peace. All right. And I'm going to tell you what makes yeah. me Come sicker on. than anything. Yeah. I'm going to rant for just a little bit. Wow. I'm tired of all these holiness contests yeah. that we have among us. I'm trying to out-holy somebody else. Watch ourselves. Yes, sir. If we're not humble enough, come on.
to stoop down and wash a brother's feet. Right. Then Jesus said, I cannot have, you cannot have any part of me. Right. right. Amen. If I think I'm too big to get down and wash Brother Driscoll's feet, then I'm a hypocrite. Right. Right. And you're a hypocrite. Right. I'll tell you where the real personalities come out. All right. I'll tell you where the real revival starts to come out. Call a foot washing service. Amen. Right. Sir, that's right. Amen. Call a foot washing service or call yep. a solemn assembly. All right. Yes, sir. Communion or yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know pretty much at that point yes. who's at peace yes. and who's not at peace. Right. Dude, I, I'm just talking about if there's a, if there's any friction that I feel, uh, if there's any tension in the atmosphere, if there is just a smidge of pressure that I feel between me and somebody else, I have to correct it. I have to address it. I have to deal with it. I cannot live with it in my heart. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness. But he said, understand that peace is all inclusive with this holiness message that we preach. We're not holy we don't have peace. That's it. That's it. We're not holy if we have things in our hearts. So Paul said, first of all, make sure that you have peace. Yeah. Make sure you have peace with God. Oh. Make sure you have peace with your wife, with your family. Right. Make sure that you have peace with people in the church. Make sure that you have peace oh. with, with everything because without peace, it is impossible for me to produce my promise. And do the things Amen. that I would like to do. Right. Seek peace and pursue it. Right. There are no options in that matter. And practical righteousness should be paramount in our lives. There are three obvious dangers to be on guard against. Falling short of God's grace by refusing right. his simple offer of salvation and his provision for their needs. Allowing a root of bitterness to grow in their assembly, perhaps the condoning of idol worship to remain in the church, and finally becoming sexually immoral or irreligious. Three major things, possibilities that can right. happen right. with an unsettled heart. Yeah. Yeah. How do people fall into sin? How do they become perverse and Come pervasive yep. in their thinking? How All do right. how do people fall in the moral traps? Yeah. Uh, it's because they have unsettled peace in yeah. their heart. Yeah. It's because they have a root of bitterness uh, that they have not dealt with, uh, that they have not cut at the root uh, of their life. Amen. Come on. And I've preached it here before. Those of you that remember the illustration that I did with the clean up next box. Yeah. Yeah. And I marched all the way around this church and I talked about the full circle when somebody hurts you. All right. And then when you come face to face with them again, yeah. how will you respond? How will you come react? On. Come on. Yeah. What kind of closure? I'm pleased to tell you today that I had a full circle with someone yeah. in my life All right. just a few days ago. Good. We had experienced some misunderstandings. But I had prayed with them for years. And I finally saw them a couple of days ago. We laughed and we joked just like it was old times. Just like it, it was like Nothing had happened. Right. You know why? Because 90% of 
of what was going on, I was making up in my mind. Right. There are things that we chase in our mind, Brother Driscoll. There are things that we chase in our lives that over half the time, they're not even there. We're just yeah. chasing them. Yeah. And some of you are sitting in this room on, here tonight. You're chasing things that are not even there. Right. You're chasing Come ideas. Right, this person is against me. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the, I, I, I'm not wanted. I'm not accepted. Uh, this person oh, doesn't oh, love me. They do not want me. And things of that nature. I'm not wanted in this church. I do not know where my place is. It's not the will of God for you to live in that kind of way. God wants to restore peace. He wants to restore order. He wants to restore his government back in this church and in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. My God, that's right. That's He's walking up and down the aisle. That's right. And as I was worshiping, I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to restore peace yes, sir. in this place tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A peace that will totally destroy and diffuse and eliminate all fear and anxiety and anger and the works of the flesh. Right. Come on. A peace that passes all understanding. That would be a garrison around my mind and that would keep my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. All right, come on. That's good. Notice it was under the law that the eldest son would receive a double inheritance. Right. Esau lost his inheritance, which included God's grace yes. and promises. By despising it and valuing the pleasure of food, over his birthright. All right. As we endeavor to follow peace with all men, this is inclusive of all sects and parties becoming favorable to our pursuit of holiness. Yes, sir. Amen. And I'm going to say something right here that's probably going to shock the living daylights out of some of you and blow your doors. <laughs> Just because you do not cut your hair or wear makeup just because you don't dress in modestly or don't participate in things you shouldn't participate. That does not necessarily mean, and I'm for it. I'm not moving from it. That, that's who we are. We're apostolic. Right, right. But don't misunderstand the point. If that is the only thing that you're pursuing in your life, yeah. you will not make it. That's right. That's right. You will not see heaven. That's right. That's you cannot have everything on the inside, outside or vice versa, but on the inside right. Right. be full, full of, of hypocrisy. Yes, sir. And be full of unforgiveness. Right. Come and be full of tension. And be full of jealousy. Yeah. I know that I'm preaching a little old fashioned tonight, but I'm telling you right now, it comes down to the heart. That Not be any difficulty. Yet, yes, different personalities, different ways of doing things. Amen. But I mean, let's look at it from the political scale. Come on. If uh, the rapture doesn't take place, all right. The reality is, this time next year we're looking at. Another election. Yeah. Amen. Hillary Clinton on one side. Oh, good. And then on the other side, the way it looks right now, Rand Paul or Scott Walker. The Republicans. So, for, for at least a year or longer, 
they're going to get together and they're going to debate. They're going to hash it out. They're going to right. they're going to sling mud on one another. They're going to try to uh, they're going to try to do whatever they can to run the other guy through the mud. All right. Yeah. To make sure that they sit in the Oval Office. Right. And they have four to eight years of what they think is going to be a vacation. Yeah. Amen. Not quite. And they have been working and striving toward this goal their entire political career. That's it. That's it. They have been through many debates. All right. They have been through Congress. They have been through Senate. They have campaigned. They have done all the groundwork. They have, they have done all the work. They have made a name. They've made a reputation for themselves. And now, all of a sudden, they have been nominated for the President of the United States. All right. The highest office in the land. Yes, sir. But it's amazing to me. When they both come off of that debate stage, and when they both settle the issue once and for all. Come on. They they give their side and then the uh, and then, then the other side gives their side. Right. They always find a way to be cordial. Yeah. They always find a way to shake hands. All right. They always find a way to somehow be friends. Yes. So how does politics work? Okay? And and our in our particular situation right now, we have a Democratic president, yeah. and then we have a Republican-controlled Congress, Senate, right, right. and House. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, That's if one of those are out of place. And you have a Supreme Court. So what does the president have to do? He has to go play golf with some of these guys. He has to uh, wine and dine them, yeah. if you please. Right. He has to do whatever he can to reach across the aisle so that they can come to some kind of agreement on the policy and what they're trying to do. Yeah. As far as what? Well, ISIS, for one. Yeah. Everybody wants to kill the Islamic State. Yeah. Some people think that we should get on the ground and just blow their living doors off. Some of some people that they think that we should negotiate, we should politic, we should uh, have a long drawn out discussion. Come on. Others think that we should just keep shooting at them from the air. Uh -huh. Air strikes. And so the president, that, that they get together. They get together on national issues. They get together on foreign issues. And then it comes to a big vote between the Congress, the Senate, and the House. It has to pass all three. Right. And then the president has to sign. Right. Whatever the president signs or vetoes, that's what's going to happen for God knows how long. Yeah. So, if you're going to be president of the United States, and you have the, uh, if you have this idea that everybody's going to love you, everybody is going to pamper you and spoil you, no one's going to try to challenge you, no one's going to try to get up in your grill or get in your head or anything like that, then you're in the wrong business. Right. You have to find you, you have to find peace. Yeah. Okay, now now let's talk more to where we live. I, I'm I, I'm still in the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you don't see it right now, but I know where I'm going. Come on. All right. You are not going to agree with Brother Driscoll on every single thing. Right. And he's not going to agree with you right. on every single thing. But that does not give you a license to attack. Right. That does not give right. you any justification Amen. to touch the anointed of yes. God. Right. That does not give you any grounds to try to cause any drama in the church. Come on. Come on. 
Do beginning state of law agree with Brother Neely? No. I was preaching for.